All right, today's photo shoot is going to be a bunch of time-lapse stuff in the city. Yeah, so I'm trying to put a lot of time into this new channel to get some content up there. I really would prefer to have just had like 10 or more videos set up for the channel before I went live with it, but I uh, just couldn't wait. You know? So let's get over to the city because it's supposed to get cloudy again, and I just can't get a day where it's like one weather condition all day long, right? Either it's cloudy all day or sunny all day. No, it's it's back and forth. So it's really I don't I don't care for spring, guys. I want summer to be here. I like when it's 90 degrees out and humid. I don't care. That guy definitely doesn't care. Your muffler sounds like sh What is up? So I just need to prove a point here. I come here, I set up the camera, I go to do a time lapse, and there's absolutely no traffic, there's no cars, there's no noise, pedestrians, nothing. As soon as I'm done shooting the time lapse, the whole world shows up, and it's just nonstop cars and traffic. So I can't wait. my change and my food and I'm good sometime today here you go all right thank you all right all right so essentially 
What started out for me as a little project experiment with time-lapse photography turned into a whole lot more. Yes, I did do some time-lapse shots, as you can see, but I also did some longer form video shots whereby I just have the camera locked onto a tripod somewhere and let it run for 20 minutes, half an hour to an hour, whatever. And then basically speed those clips up in post to give the same kind of speed format that you see in the time-lapse stuff. So obviously time-lapse is just still images stacked together right you can set it how you want for how many Im how many images it takes per second and then for what period of time you want those shots to go so once that's complete it gives you one clip essentially of those stacked images uh, in chronological sequence and you can do with it whatever you want but it's very choppy and if that's a look you're going for then that's great so i kind of wanted to compare the two to see what kind of vibe and feel i got with the same background music running and uh, it's interesting to see because some of it there are instances where you want that choppy dramatic kind of feel and other times you want it to be more fluid and seamless and see more motion blur uh, with the high speed you know just regular video clip i also did some slow motion stuff where i filmed at 30 or 60 frames per second and then slow that down in final cut pro uh, to the appropriate speeds the appropriate percentages to make it look fluid and seamless on a 24 or frame per second timeline beyond those techniques i threw in a few more as well just for fun little stuff for me to practice i was doing some panning techniques uh, like swish pans where basically you take one clip and then a completely different clip and as long as the motion between the two is kind of the same it's a, it's a great transition just make it look very seamless that's something i would like to work on a little bit more but that's a lot of fun i think those kind of motions and those kind of transitions are what are going to keep the viewer engaged a little bit longer keep their interest and you know basically you want to make sure that people are watching your videos from start to finish so that's something i'm still striving for i feel like the pace is getting better for myself i feel like i'm beginning to understand how to edit to music a lot better and in this particular instance i'm using that you know high speed high upbeat uh dancing music and i wanted to give this video a little bit of a, a car commercial vibe so i wanted it to be fun engaging quick uh, a lot of different cuts and edits and stuff like that and add it to the music so when the beat drops i think that's a huge huge benefit to making sure that your viewer stays engaged with the project all the way through whether it's a 30 second video or several minutes long or what have you so this was a lot of fun and i'm going to continue to work on all of these techniques and more but i would tell you all this the canon m6 mark ii does have some decent presets for the time-lapse photography already built into the menu. You can customize all of them however you see fit. So if you wanna have it set to, I don't know, take uh, one picture per second or you wanna do five, seven, 10 frames per second, it's up to you. Uh, it really depends on what it is that you're photographing. So if you wanna do like a sunrise or a sunset, you don't need a picture every couple seconds. You might need one every 10 seconds or what have you. You know, something something a little longer because obviously there's not a lot of motion. Um, conversely, if you're photographing something like the cars on the throughway or a runner, biker, some kind of fast action sequence, uh, then it, it makes more sense probably to do shorter time frames, you know, a couple seconds between each shot, or excuse me, a couple more frames per second uh, for that shot, you know, to kind of make it a little more in, uh, you know just a little more seamless essentially otherwise you're going to see somebody start here and the next frame they're like already out of frame over here which isn't going to do much for you know your particular sequence depends what you're going for um, i think on the whole though for myself i really prefer just shooting regular 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second and just let the camera run just let it run for an hour make sure your battery's full obviously because you're going to need that to just let it sit there and run continuously well this camera takes up to 30 minutes of video at one time that's some kind of weird setting they have it's like EU, european standard i don't know what it is but for this particular camera you can only get the 30 minutes at one time then you have to press you know st the shutter button again and you can get another 30 minutes. It's odd, I don't know why they do it. It's a whole explanation. It's some legal thing with the European standards. I don't really understand because we're not in Europe here. This is the US, North America. Please, Canon, resolve that. I know that Sony or some of the others have gotten around that. Um, it's, it's outdated, just fix that, please. I'd like to be able to shoot one shot if I want to for an hour or more, that would be great. Anyways, rant aside, I had a lot of fun with this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave a comment down below. I want to know what your thoughts are on both what I'm doing here 
you know, my stage in the learning evolutionary process of learning how to uh, film better sequences and then what you're doing. And also, what kind of gear are you using? I'm, can, I'm interested to know what cameras, what lenses you use. I only have two lenses right now. I've got the 11 to 22 millimeter Canon lens and then I've got the Sig Sigma 16 millimeter lens. That's my prime. Uh, that's it. So what, what's a third lens? What's a good third lens? What would you recommend for me, for somebody like myself who wants to make sure that I've got all the different ranges of lenses available to me, you know, depending on what I'm doing. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and kill that like button, and I'll come back to you guys soon in the next one. See you soon. Later.